In this short video, I'm going to demonstrate section 5.4, which is the central limit uh, theorem. So let me tell you what the central limit theorem is. So I'd like you to watch this applet and see uh, what's happening when I use uh, the applet. What you see is a bell-shaped distribution. It's a normal population. The mean is 25 and the standard deviation is 5. Here's what we're going to do. From this population, we're going to pick samples of size 4. So we'll pick a sample of size 4, 4 members in each sample, and we're going to find the mean of each sample. So we're going to find what we call the sample mean, which is x bar. I'm going to do it one time and show you what happens. You see, four members were selected, and then the average of the four, so that means the four values were added up and divided by four, and we got the sample mean right here, as you can see. Let's do another one. Here's the second value. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. Okay, let's do five of them now. So we're going to pick five samples of size four each. See the applet is working. Everything is happening in real time in a few seconds. Now we're going to pick 1000 samples of size 4. And what the applet is going to do, it's going to find 1000 sample means and plot them. And we're going to see what the shape of those sample means is going to be like. There you go. That's 1000. I'm going to do another 1,000. And before even you blink your eye, as guys, this is happening. Okay. Here is how many uh, samples we have already. We have 5,009 samples. I'm going to do one more. And that's it. Okay. What do we observe here? This is the original population. It has a standard deviation of 5. Look at the new distribution of the sample means. It looks like bell shaped as well as you notice. So it's also normally, a, it's a normal distribution, approximately normal. It looks like bell shaped, but it looks like it's narrower than the original population. If you look at the original population, it looks like the data is, are more widely spread than this new population of sample means. So what does this mean? It means that the new distribution of the sample means is bell-shaped, but it has a smaller standard deviation than the original population. But I like to notice also, look, this is the mean of the original population, which is 25. And look at the mean of the sample means as well. It's also about the 25. It's 25.03, which is if I keep putting in samples, it's going to be 25 eventually. So the original population has a mean of 25. And the new distribution of the sample means has a mean also of 25. But it has a smaller standard deviation. And let me prove to you it is a smaller standard deviation. This one is of a stand original standard deviation is 5. Look at the standard deviation of the sample means is 2.4709. But I like you to notice here, take the square root of 4, the sample size. What is the square root of 4 is 2. Divide 5 by 2, what do you get? You get 2.5, which is pretty much the standard deviation right here. So you really don't need to run the applet to figure out what the standard deviation of the sample means is going to be. You just take this original standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size and then you uh, you get the standard deviation of the sample means. Now I change the sample size to 36 as you can see. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to do 1000 times. There's another 1000. 4000. 5000. And here's 6,000. So I got about 7,000 samples. What the applet did, it did 7,000 sample means and it plotted all of them and look at the shape. It looks also the distribution of the sample means is bell-shaped, approximately bell-shaped. 
you notice that the mean of the new distribution is 25 and the mean of the original distribution is also 25 but do you agree with me that the uh, shape of the curve is uh, much narrower than the original population and even narrower than when we did the example with the sample size of four why because the standard deviation is a lot smaller i would like you to look at the standard deviation here it's 0 0.8334 what i like you to do guys take square root of 36 which is six if you divide five by six you're gonna get a standard deviation very close to 0 0.8334 so just take the five divided by the square root of 36 which is 5 over 6 and to check the math it's going to be the standard deviation of 0 0.8334 it might not be exactly the answer but it's very close uh, to it okay okay now i um, have a population that's not bell shaped not normally distributed kind of screwed to the right so i'm just showing you this distribution that is uh, scored to uh, the right okay so let's see i'm drawing one population that is scored to the right okay it has a mean of 20.6 and a standard deviation of 8.5 and now we're going to see what happens when we draw samples of size 36 and we try to find the mean of each sample and i'm not going to do just one sample like i did before i'm going to do thousands of samples so let's do it one time first to show you how this is happening and then we're going to do it 1000 times 2000 times 3000 4000 times 5000 times 6000 times 7000 times and here's one more okay what do you notice so the original population is not bell shaped but what happens to the new distribution of the sample means it remains bell shaped and you notice the mean is what 20.59 which is 20 about 20.6 and look at the original mean which is 20.6 as well what happens to the standard deviation it's going to be a lot smaller standard deviation here the standard deviation looks large the data is very widely spread which is 8.15 if you take 8.15 guys and divide it by square root of 36 which is 8 by 6 you should get about 1.33 and look at the standard deviation right here 1.35 you should get look it's 8.36 which is very close to the answer of dividing 8.1534 divided by square root of 36 so in conclusion the distribution of the sample means will always turn out to be a bell shaped with a smaller uh, standard deviation than the original population it's always preferred to work with the uh, with a distribution that has smaller standard deviations then we can ensure more consistency uh, in the meeting uh, when we meet next time i'm going to show you how to put the central limit theorem into practice when computing uh, normal probabilities.